Okay, so welcome to this fourth video on uh, the Wnt beta catenin pathway and familial adenomatous polyposis. So, okay, let's talk about familial adenomatous polyposis then now, which is a form of hereditary risk for cancer. So, in fact, actually, I'll get a new piece of paper and we'll do it on there. Okay, I don't want them to be squashed into that little space. So now we're talking about familial, familial. Uh, adenomatous polyposis, uh, which is often abbreviated just to FAP. And sometimes people will actually call it familial adenomatous polyposis coli. So you might also see it with the coli on the end there. But the real name is just familial adenomatous polyposis, and it's often abbreviated to FAP. Okay, right. So what happens in familial adenomatous polyposis? Right, well, basically, um, you get mutations, loss of function mutations, in the adenomatous polyposis coli gene. Now, you have two genes for adenomatous polyposis coli, so I'll show them here. Here are the two genes for adenomatous polyposis coli. Here's one, let's say that's the paternal one, and here's your maternal one. So you have two homologous chromosomes, and uh, those, therefore, you have two copies of this gene. Okay, so you, you have two copies. So this is the APC uh, gene. And then there'll be another one on this paternal chromosome over here. So this is the APC, or adenomatous polyposis coli gene. Adenomatous polyposis coli gene. Okay, right. So, um... And what happens in familial adenomatous polyposis is that in the germline, you are missing or you have a loss of function mutation in one of these, basically. So, uh, from birth, absolutely every single one of your cells, on one of the chromosomes, the adenomatous polyposis coli gene is defunctional. It is not working. Maybe it has been deleted. Maybe it has got a mutation in it that means that it no longer works. Maybe the promoter region is just silent and it's not being expressed at all. Whatever the reason, you have got loss of function of one of your uh, genes for adenomatous polyposis coli. Loss of function. Okay, so you have one hit to these, to these two genes in the, in the germline, basically. Now, let's think about what's going to happen to a cell if it loses both of these genes, basically. So, let's go back to our pathway and see where adenomatous polyposis coli was important. It was basically one of these constituents of the beta-catenin destruction complex. So, what would happen to your cell if you had absolutely no adenomatous polyposis coli? Well, you would have no functional beta-catenin destruction complexes. So, you wouldn't be able to uh, target beta-catenin for ubiquitination, and therefore beta-catenin wouldn't be destroyed. So beta-catenin would just continue to be made in the cell, and it would build up and up and up. So you would have continuously high beta-catenin levels. And what have we seen that high levels of beta-catenin do? Well, it drives the cell firstly into the G1 phase by producing uh, proteins involved in DNA replication, and then it actually is involved in driving the cell from G1 into the S phase by uh, producing cyclin D. So basically, high beta-catenin means you are replicating your cell very fast. Okay. So, if you have no functional adenomatous polyposis coli, you are going to get excessive cell division. So, basically, this gene is involved in stopping cell division. Therefore, it is an, another example of a tumor suppressor gene. Now, tumor suppressor genes obey the Knudsen 2 hit hypothesis, basically. Tumor suppressor genes. Because in order to actually get uh, the formation of cancer, you need to have lost function in both of them, basically. It's no good just losing one. You're not going to get cancer if you only lose one, um, because the other one is still there, and that's still functional, and that will still be uh, contributing to the beta-catenin destruction complex and keeping beta-catenin low. So, you need to lose both. 
and that's the Knudsen two-hit hypothesis. So a single cell um, needs to um, have two of the tumor suppressor genes um, lost, basically, in order to actually start oncogenesis. So that's the Knudsen two-hit hypothesis. And that makes it quite rare in, in uh, normal people, people who have uh, from in their germline have two healthy adenomatous polyposis uh, coli genes because if you have two healthy genes then you need to get a cell which ha get, is unlucky enough to get a mutation in both of these genes that causes it to lose its function. Now that's pretty rare whereas if you have got one of these lost in from the germline then all you need is um, is a single mutation in a single cell. So basically all the cells of your body already have this first mutation. So all that needs to happen is this second one needs to get a loss of function mutation and then you've got a cell which has no functional adenomatous polypus as coli genes. And that's going to lead to oncogenesis basically. Okay, so in the case of familial adenomatous polyposis, what you have is a lost um, a lost APC gene in the germline and basically that means that all your cells of your body only need to get a single somatic mutation so you don't, you're not lucky, you don't obey the nuts and two hit hypothesis, you only need a single hit, a single somatic mutation basically in order to actually get full knockout of APC in a single cell and then that cell will divide out of control basically so single hit slash somatic mutation. Okay, so that is why um, familial adenomatous polyposis uh, patients have incredible risk of developing cancer because in their cells, all of their cells of the body, they already have a single mutation in this APC gene, uh, in one of their APC genes, and all they need is a second uh, mutation in their uh, in that other APC gene and that, you know, you've got trillions of cells. The probability that in one of them it's going to happen is not too, um, is not unimaginable basically. So you are more likely that it's going to happen and basically the first place it starts to happen is in the colon. So these people get colon cancer. Colon. Uh, and basically what happens is in the colon loads of the colonic epithelial cells, so let's say here's a colonic epithelial cell, basically they get mutations in their second and only functional APC gene, so they lose all APC. And what that means is that they start uh, dividing out of control because beta-catenin goes up in these cells, so beta-catenin goes through the roof, and they start dividing. So you get these huge sort of masses of um, colonic epithelial cells and those masses, so I'll draw loads of colonic epithelial cells, you get large great masses of colonic epithelial cells basically. Okay, so you get a huge great mass of colonic epithelial cells on your colon, a, a, a visualizable lump, a seeable lump with the naked eye and this lump is what is known as a polyp and you get these basically happening all over your colon because basically loads of the colonic epithelial cells start getting this second mutation in their, APC, in their only functional APC gene and that causes them to start dividing out of control basically. Now, I want to stress that this is a tumour. It is a tumour. A polyp is a type of tumour. A tumour is just a, uh, a growth basically. But it is not yet cancer. Because all that's happened is that these cells are dividing out of control. And this is an important concept. To be cancer, you have to be more than that. At the moment, uh, this is a benign tumour. That's a good word to know. Basically, a tumour, just a mass, a mass of cells is not cancer. It's what's known as benign tumour. Cancer is what is known as a malignant tumour. And what's the difference between a malignant tumour and a, a benign tumour? Well, basically, malignant tumours have to be invading and destroying the healthy tissue. And they have to also 
Yes, that's the that's the definition. They have to be invading and destroying healthy tissue. So they have to be destroying the healthy bits of your body. Whereas a benign tumor, it can just sit on the side. Basically, it, it's dividing out of control. But if it's not destroying other healthy tissue, then it's a benign tumor as opposed to a malignant tumor. So the definition of a malignant tumor is that it's invasive and destructive, basically. And that's what we mean when we say cancer. Uh, we're talking about a, a, a tumour that's effectively eating your healthy cells alive. So it's destroying healthy tissue. So this is what we mean by cancer. Now, benign tumours generally turn into malignant tumours. And the reason is this, that at the moment, all that's happened to these cells is that they've got a mutation that is causing them to divide out of control. Now, in order to become a malignant tumour, you have to have more than that. You do, you are dividing out of control, but you also have to have properties that mean that you are destroying healthy tissue. And in order to do that, you have to get a bunch of other mutations. You need the, uh, a bunch of other mutations in order to uh, go from being uh, benign to being malignant. So you need a bunch of other mutations in loads of other genes. Now, why do benign tumours generally turn into malignant tumours? Well, the reason is this. You've got a massive great population of cells dividing very rapidly. The chance that one of them is going to make a mistake when it's dividing its DNA and the chance that it's going to get mutations accumulating is basically much higher in this setup than in normal healthy tissue. So, the chance that you will actually undergo further mutations that is higher in, the, in a tumour setting, in a benign tumour setting, than in a normal healthy tissue setting. So, the fact that they're dividing very rapidly, the fact that you have a high population means that the chance that just one of them might get one of these extra mutations that maybe leads it to getting closer to becoming malignant is greater. And basically, it's the ultimate Darwinian selection process. It's just that you've got absolutely loads of them, and the chance that one of them will get, acquire some of these extra mutations that it needs to become malignant is higher in this setup than in normal healthy tissue. So, basically, as the benign tumour grows, what will happen is that all of these will start to become slightly different cells because they'll have all acquired slightly different mutations, basically. And this concept that they're all, they're all um, different genetic makeup is the concept of heterogeneity in a tumour. And we're going to focus a lot on this concept of heterogeneity. Uh, so the concept that the cells of the tumour aren't all actually genetically identical because they're sort of doing a, um, a bad job of replicating, basically, and they're um, creating mutations in themselves uh, is an important concept. And what eventually is going to happen is one of them is going to get the right combination of mutations that means that it can be invasive and destructive, and then it will take over and it will divide and divide and produce loads of other ones that have these same mutations, and that will then lead to the production of a malignant tumour. So that... Um, development process from a benign tumour to a malignant tumour is a very important concept, basically. Uh, so, what happens is by people with familial adenomatous polyposis, what happens is that by the age of 20, their colon is absolutely covered in these polyps, these benign tumours, which are just masses where uh, these cells have acquired this second mutation in the APC gene, and that's allowed them to divide out of control, basically. So you've got a lump. However, they're not yet cancer, but they provide a prime breeding ground, basically, a prime selection ground for uh, malignant tumours to be formed, basically. Uh, the chance that one of these cells in these polyps is going to get the right combination of mutations, that it becomes a malignant cell, and is then going to give rise to a whole population of malignant cells, which will become a malignant tumour and will gradually uh, invade and destroy healthy tissue, that becomes greater. So, what generally happens is they have to have their entire colon removed, and usually that's by the age of 20, and that's called a pancolectomy, uh, where you remove the entire colon, basically. Pancolectomy, removal of entire colon. Removal of 
and that's pretty much the only treatment for uh, adenomatous polypus, uh, well, familial adenomatous polypus. Once, it, once it's actually been diagnosed, it's usually far too late for chemotherapy to help here, so removal of entire colon is usually necessary.